Day 22 is rare. And when it comes to it, the game that always, is always going to come to mind for me when I think of rare games is going to be Dune Chronicles of the Imperium. One of the last entries that used the um, icon system from Last Unicorn. Now, I know that Modifus is working on a Dune 2D20 game, and I wish them all the best because Lord knows they're going to need it. But when it comes to do, when it comes to the Dune Chronicles of the, the Imperium, that was a case of really bad timing because they had put out a single book, ostensibly a limited edition, and then a regular edition would come out later. Well, in between now and that later, um, Last Unicorn went belly up. They got bought out by Wizards of the Coast. It seemed that there was going to be a D20 version made instead, but that never happened. So the only version that was ever in publication was that um, limited edition. And because of that, the game is really hard to get. Not as hard to get as some, o- as some other old games, but it is. And speaking of which, the more that you go into the outside edges of the tabletop community, the harder to get games that you end up finding. Well, as long as you know where to look. Now, I like the icon system, and I do think that there was a lot of potential with the Chronicles of the Imperium game. But this is one of those cases where the timing gods just weren't on, just weren't on anybody's side. I don't. Th- I think if the game, by some miracle, had re-released, it may have gotten a second chance. But unfortunately, it can't anymore. So that's a um, bummer. I mean. I'm pretty sure PDF traders still have it, but that's the only way you're really going to get it unless you want to break the bank. Of course, the other big example that comes to mind, even though it's not that rare, is Marvel Heroic Roleplaying, a game that I reviewed several years ago in my old format, and I still hold in high regard. Marvel Heroic had everything going for it. It it was well-respected, it had won several awards the year that it came out, and it seemed like the sky was the limit. And then, out of nowhere, the rug got pulled out from everybody when Marvel decided to take back the license, and thus the whole game got wiped. And I was never able to get a straight answer as to why. I had heard from some sources that the Civil War expansion didn't quite sell, which I think in that case you probably should have gone with a better event comic than than something as divisive as Civil War. Um, I've heard it was a case of a regime change at Disney, which honestly wouldn't be too surprising. But for whatever reason, I didn't care for the notion of just having the game completely scrubbed like that. Especially since for months I kept getting teased about games that I wouldn't be able to buy, thanks to the whole Amazon recommend emails that I get every few weeks. Now, fortunately, it's gotten a bit of a pick back up since fandom has taken over the uh, Cortex name. But it's one of those things that's always going to sting. And I really hope that Cortex is able to establish itself as one of the top um, freeform modular RPGs in the coming years. That's why I'm waiting to see how Cortex Prime is going to pan out and whether or not that's going to maintain the same spirit as the original Cortex Plus. Time will tell. 